Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today I'll solve the problem, minimized maximum of products distributed to any store. Long problem name and the description is decently long. We'll get right into it, but I want to quickly mention to you, before you get too far into this problem, it is a very, very similar problem once again from the neat code 150 list. I'll actually show you the problem. It's actually uh, this one. So in binary search, if I go to Coco eating bananas, the third one in that list, well, I guess I won't spoil it too much for you. But uh, just so you know, this one is practically the same as this problem. I would say the one we're solving today is slightly more difficult. So you might want to check out this one first. Let's just focus on the example. N equals six means that we're given six different stores. So I'll just kind of draw like a slot for each of them. These are the stores we're given, and we're also given some products, and that's given in the form of a quantities array. So this tells us we have two products. One product has a quantity of 11, and the other one has a quantity of 6. So the rules of the game are every single one of these stores can only have at most one of these products. So it can have, let's say, five from the first product, or maybe it can have six from the second product, but it can't have like, let's say 12 because it can't have 11 from this one and more from the other product. So it can only pick one product. It's possible for a store to have zero. So we don't have to give every single store some of the products. But if we do give a store products, we can only pick one product. So one possible way we could distribute these are like maybe this one gets seven from this product and this one gets four from the same product and then this one gets six and maybe the rest of these get nothing. So this is one way to distribute with the store. This way, the maximum value that any given store had was seven. We call this number X. We are trying to minimize this number and then return it. So if we wanted to, we could have actually distributed the products differently. We could have done three here and then three here. And let's say these are coming from this one and then three here. We are left with two quantity of this. So we can like put the two over here and then we have six. So we can split that six two ways uh, here and here. So now if you look at all of these, the maximum that we have is three. It's not two, it's three. And so that's our X value. And this is actually the optimal way to distribute the products. This is what's going to minimize our X. It's going to be three. And that's the smallest we can get it. What I just showed you, there's actually a very easy brute force solution to this problem. Given that all of the quantities are going to be positive, as we would expect, the theoretical minimum value we could give each store is one, like a quantity of one from the products. Now, it's possible that that's not enough. We still might have some products left over. We do not want to have anything that's left over. We might be able to get rid of this, but we still have this product. We want to distribute everything. So let's try the next number, two. So if you put two in all these spots, you might be able to uh, get rid of one of these again, but you can't get rid of both. And so we can kind of just keep going. Starting from one, we can go all the way up until the max number. What is the max possible number? Well, it can't be any larger than the product with the max quantity. So it's never going to be larger than the max number in this array. So max of quantities. So we can run a brute force from here all the way to here. One, two, three, until we find that number such that we're actually able to distribute the products and that's when we will stop. So this brute force approach is going to be, well, I guess before I even get into the time complexity, I wanna mention that we will have to figure out how to distribute the products. The way I'm gonna do it, the time complexity is gonna be big O of Q, where Q is the size of that products array, the quantities, and times that with like the max element within Q. So this is the brute force. If you kind of see what I'm doing here, you quickly realize that we don't have to linearly scan through these values. Technically, these values, one, two, three, up until the max, they are technically in sorted order. We just want to find the minimum of them that's actually viable. So here's what we do. We pick the midway point in this range, whatever it happens to be. X, let's call it, uh, in this case, it'd probably be a six or something. 
since the max is 11, we pick the midway point, and then six we find is enough. Choosing x equals six, this is the max that any of these stores is gonna have. So if we try to distribute these, we can give this a six, this a six, and maybe this a five, the rest of these will get zero, and this is viable, it technically does work. Now, this is not the minimum, that we can possibly get, so we will continue to try it. We will refine our search range. We will turn this problem into a binary search problem. So since a six was viable, we will now update our range to be everything to the left of six. You can kind of imagine, I won't draw out like the entire thing. If this is what our array looked like, one up until 11, now our search space is going to be this, one through five. We wanna see if any of these is also viable. We're looking for the smallest viable solution. And this binary search part isn't super difficult. Assuming you have a helper function, which will allow you to distribute products to stores to determine if it's viable or not. So we have products, we have stores, and let's say we have an X value. Let's say X is six. There are multiple ways to do this. We're gonna be iterating through the products because we don't necessarily need every store to have a product, but we need every a product to go to a store. So we just wanna reach the end of the products array, distributing everything as we go. So how do we do it? Well, our X is already six. We are trying to have six as the max value for the stores. So let's just use that. We just wanna know, can we distribute these? with six, we don't have to make them any smaller than six. It doesn't do us any good to do that. So let's just go through the products. We could say, okay, we have 11, let's put six over here and let's turn this into a five. Okay, again, we wanna fill this guy, okay, five here. Let's uh, set that now to zero and then we get the five here and then we can kind of keep going. But as you do that, you realize that what we're really doing is just doing this. Like if I had gone through with this simulation, we would have ended up with something like this and we would have found that we can distribute these to uh, three stores with this. And that's perfectly fine because if the rest of the stores get zero, three is technically less than six. And this six is not this one. This six comes from the fact that we have six different stores. So we determined that six is viable. It might not be the smallest, but it is viable. The way to do that is to go through each quantity for the products. And rather than doing like six and then five here, we could actually just take this and ask the question, how many stores is it gonna take for us to distribute 11 if the max that we can possibly give any of the stores is six? Well, you just take 11 and divide it by six. So that's gonna give us a uh, one point something, I think 1.8 something, but this value, we don't wanna round it down. We actually wanna round it up because 1.8 stores, that's not really like sensical. That pretty much means two stores in real life. So we can change that to two by taking like the ceiling of it. And so we need two stores to distribute these 11 quantity of products, these 11 products. And these two stores could be that. And then we would do the same thing for this product, six uh, divided by six, one store needed for that. So we need three stores total. Three is less than six, so it's valid. Now, if we had X equals two, let's try the same thing. 11, okay, 11 divided by two. I'm gonna need at least six stores for that. It might look something like this, two, 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 and then a one over here. Okay, so all six stores already have products. And then I have the second one, six, and I'm gonna divide that by two as well, and I'm gonna get three. I need three more stores. So this tells me I need nine stores total, but I only have six of them. So actually two is not viable. It's not big enough. We need a bigger number. So now our search space would be updated. Like we already removed this from the search space. Now we can remove two and everything to the left of two. So we're only now searching this range. So knowing all that, you can solve this problem in big O of Q log max of Q time. This is the max number inside of Q. Anyways, let's code this up now. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is create that helper function, can distribute. Well, actually, I'm not even gonna fill it in. I'm just gonna define it first. So something like this can uh, distribute, whoops, given some X value. And from here, we'll return true or false. And then we'll set up the binary search. 
our range left right is from one all the way up until the max inside of the quantities array. And then we're gonna do the binary search while left is less than or equal to right, whoops. I'm gonna have my results, I'll initialize it uh, to zero. Doesn't really matter what that is set to. That's what we're gonna end up returning and we're gonna be populating it within this loop. And we're gonna calculate the halfway point of our search space. So I'm gonna call that X left plus right uh, divided by two. Yes, I know that this is technically gonna overflow. Technically the better way to do it is this, left plus right minus left and then divide this thing by two. But I know most beginners don't really care about this and usually it's not relevant anyway. So I think this is fine. Now we wanna know, can we distribute with this X? So let's call can distribute with that x. If it's true, that means this is viable. This x is viable. And we can say that this is the smallest one that we've seen so far. We can set the result equal to x. And now we can try to look for a smaller one. We can say r is now equal to x minus one. We're looking to the left of x, looking for a smaller one. Otherwise, we can say else uh, left is equal to x plus one. We're looking for a bigger one because even this one was not big enough. So we're pretty much done now. The only thing is this one, the helper function. And it's gonna be pretty quick and easy. Once you know that you can just use division for it, we will count the number of stores that we need. So I'll initialize stores uh, to zero, and then I'll go through every quantity that we have. I'll divide it by X. I'm not using integer division here because I wanna take the ceiling of this float value and I want to add it to the result. Then I'm not gonna return the number of stores. I just wanna know if the number of stores needed is actually less than N. If that's the case, this'll be true. Otherwise, it's gonna be false. That's what we need to implement the binary search as you can see here. Okay, I had a small bug here where stores is less than N. It should actually be less than or equal for obvious reasons, I guess. But now you can see that this solution works and it's very efficient. I know you're probably thinking, wow, I would have never guessed that this was a binary search question, even if this explanation made sense to you. And I want you to know that's perfectly okay. Most people are used to doing binary search on data structures, but it's actually a classical uh, category to do binary search on a range rather than on a data structure. It's a very common thing. And it's actually asked in interviews quite a bit because most people don't like prepare for this. So if you want to practice it, I definitely recommend checking out Neatcode.io. You can check out like the courses, which are pretty good, especially if you're a beginner. Definitely you should check out like the practice problems and the roadmap because these problems come up quite a bit.